Welcome back to another episode of Beyond Grayskull. And before we continue our Kevin Smith's Masters of the Universe Revelation reviews, it's that time of year for all those wacky-ass Christmas specials and none more crazier than a He-Man and She-Ra Christmas special. Yep, you heard that right. Even on the distant alien world, Christmas is a thing. So you ain't here to hear me crap on. Let's go check it out. This is He-Man and She-Ra, the Christmas special. We begin, well, of course, where else but the Royal Palace of Eternia with the most bizarre mix of characters of all time. A muscle man with an elephant's head, a bearded guy with a huge metal fist, two little weirdos wearing purple, flying human butterflies, and whatever the hell this thing is, as they all help clean up the Royal Palace as Queen Melena reminisces about Christmas on her home planet of Earth. Yes, Prince Adam's mum is from Earth. It's a long story, and I won't waste your time going into detail. Just deal with it, okay? As we cut away to Man-at-Arms and Prince Adam, as they appear to be working on some giant metal dildo. Oh, apparently it's a spacecraft. As everyone's favourite hero, Orko, peeks around and the foolish dickhead sets the rocket off, blasting into the air. Duncan says, quick, hit the self-destruct button. It won't blow up, claims Adam. Well, looks like Orko has got himself into some serious shit once again. Blasting into the titles, He-Man and She-Ra, the Christmas special. Just in case you thought you're watching, you know, the Star Wars holiday special or some shit. As we cut away to our favourite villain, Skeletor, as he does some sort of fist-pumping dance, demanding they get the rocket. Oh, but no time to piss around by the power of bloody Greyskull. <laughs> no time to talk, sis. Off to save the ship. Gee, what a dickhead of a brother, she says. He didn't even ask if he needed my help. You're trying to grab more than you can handle. And, yep, you heard that right. He-Man, as you will find and discover, has many double meanings with the stuff he says. As he twists Skeletor's ship claws into some sort of knot. But Skeletor won't stand for that shit. Wrap his ass up in my bondage tentacles. But never fear, She-Ra is here. As they both decide to kill everyone on board the ship by busting a big ass hole into it. <laughs> However, no time to cause mass murder. We need to stop that spacecraft as He-Man and She-Ra take flight after it. As it heads towards space, and yes, Swift Wind can breathe in space. Don't ask how, I don't write the damn thing. Orko then realises, shit, no one even knows I'm here. But, you know, I know my friends. They will find a way to save me. Cutting to Duncan and Adam as they say, shit, that's a big ass TV. What time's the football starting? As we return back to Orko as he crash lands onto a strange world. Yep, you guessed it, Planet Earth. So to all those who shit on the Dolph Lundgren He-Man movie, guess what? The cartoon went to Earth first. So there, stick that in your pipe and smoke it. Orko hears a cry for help as two kids are almost crushed by an avalanche, but his magic somehow saves the day. Rather than the kids ask, what the hell is this floating purple thing, or how it uses magic to save them, they rather tell this odd creature about the Christmas tree they have. Duncan claims all the food and shit I spill into this thing, why do I even have it? As a door interrupts claiming Orko is missing and Queen Malada demands, Whose porn magazine is this? Uh, not mine, mother. I think it's Duncan's, says Adam. Why would you tell her that, you little bastard, cries Duncan. As we return back to planet Earth with Orko, little female He-Man and Luke Skywalker as they explain what Christmas is to Orko. And I mean from the very, very start. Shit, we ain't got time for that. Cut back to the palace. As a bunch of random numbers appear, who's been calling these sex hotline numbers? No, 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 Duncan claims. Those are the coordinates to planet Earth, my lady. Now, okay, to sum this shit up easily, to get to planet Earth, they need to find some crystal or some shit that can only be found on Adora's home world. As she heads back, Adam claims, be safe, you are my favourite sister. Dickhead, she's your only sister. For the honour of bloody Grayskull, transforming into She-Ra, mind you, in open public where anyone could see her. Luckily for her, no one's around. Cutting back to these little turds as they explain about Santa and my god, just kill something already, people. Shira then talks to Ariel, the little mermaid, claiming the crystal she seeks is guarded by some big ass monster. Oh, screw this. Just let Orko rot on Earth, I say. It's his own damn fault, anyways, for getting there. 
arriving to face off with the horrible beast monster, Shira, well, who can normally talk to creatures with her mind, clearly forgets this and just decides to kick its ass. But oh shit, I've seen this porno before. Oh wait, no, no, no. It's just some big ass robot. Oh wait, this is the pre-Transformers Transformers as they fly off. Okay, that was kind of pointless. Returning the crystal to Man-at-Arms, right, let's bring this little shit home. However, being the dickhead he is, Orko decides to bring the two kids with him. I'm starting to think Kevin Smith was right by killing his little dumb ass off. As Orko straight up sexually assaults Adora and explains what happened, we cut away to a flying flaming potato. As we see or rather hear Horde Prime summon Skeletor and Hordak. Returning to the palace, it appears the two kids are stuck here, but what about Christmas? Yes, yes, that would be my first concern too, kid. I mean, stuck in an alien world and all, but no, no, what's important is Christmas. Queen Malena, she has a brilliant idea. Let's ignore Adam and Adora's first birthday together as brother and sister and make it all about Christmas. I mean, you know, something that no one celebrates on this planet anyway. Horde Prime has summoned Skeletor and Hordak, and for some reason, he's worried about Christmas spirit or some shit. I mean, oh, okay, we're going there, are we? Yep, Skeletor and Hordak are brought here to destroy Christmas spirit. Then we get Skeletor doing his best Tommy Wiseau impersonation. That's me! That's me! And I must say, Skeletor delivers that line better than what Tommy Wiseau did. Returning back to the kids, I mean, you know, the most important characters in a He-Man and She-Ra special. I mean, we don't need to see them. It's all about these kids. As Perfumer, who has to be the biggest pain in the royal ass of any He-Man character slash She-Ra character, just listen to this bitch. Oh, don't be sad, children. You'll be home soon. And until then, I'll make it seem like springtime. She makes it spring, and get this, this little turd claims Christmas is during winter. Really? Okay, you little cockknuckle, well, here you are explaining Christmas to Orko, but here's one thing you don't understand. This is planet Earth. See here? This is where I come from. It's called Australia. And guess what? It's bloody hot here for Christmas. Not cold, not winter, but bloody summer. So don't you talk shit and you don't dare explain anyone that Christmas is a white, snowy Christmas, you dipshit. Because it ain't like that all over the world. All right, all right. I've had enough of my rant. Back to the movie. Bo decides to sing his new Christmas song. Oh, shit, forget about it. Don't return to the movie. Don't return to the movie. Then Hordak turns up in clearly a cock-shaped helicopter as he kidnaps the kids and Orko. Once again, all Orko's fault. Now, if you still think He-Man doesn't have any sexual images, feast your eyes on this. Yep, that's right, a giant robot holding a metal dildo. Now, I'm not wrong, am I? The giant robots, for some reason, they also want the kids as they capture them and Orko, making Hordak fly away in his metal dildo. Now, just before you think you have seen the most bizarre shit in any He-Man or She-Ra show, just watch this bullshit. Orko and the kids are now in prison, and they are freed by whatever the hell this thing is, called Cutter, his cousin called Zipper, who sounds like a messed up Bill Cosby. Just listen. Man, there's a monstrae just around the corner. As they try to escape, they are once again captured. Oh, <laughs> but He-Man says, let my friends go, asshole. But of course they don't listen to He-Man. So he just busts the shit out of one of the giant machines as she uses her sword as a lasso to rope one down. Can she turn her sword into anything? Oh, hang on, hang on, better not answer that. Outnumbered and outgunned. This looks like the end for our hero. <laughs> nah, it's just a walk in the park as they beat the living shit out of these robots. But just when you think it's all over, Skeletor now screws everything up by capturing the kids. My god, these kids get captured more than April O'Neil from the Ninja Turtles. Of course, Hordak foils Skeletor's plans as the children and him go crashing down into the snow. Now my favourite scene, as the kids try and explain 
what the meaning of Christmas is to Skeletor, and he is just disgusted as he learns about caring and love. And of course, Skeletor is just repulsed by the sound of that. Then he decides to give the kids two coats to keep them warm. <laughs> Skeletor is just the greatest, isn't he? As he tries to abandon the alien dog, but oh, oh wait, the spirit of Christmas overcomes Skeletor as well. I don't know what's coming over me. Yep, another misguided sexual line of dialogue, but let's not go back there and repeat what was said. They continue to walk in the snow as Skeletor asks them, Tell me more about this Christmas thing. As they claim it's about fun, Skeletor then asks, Do they fight? Fights are fun! I like fights! God, I love this man! He truly makes this show what it is. As they continue ex to explain about Christmas, a huge ass snow beast appears. Skeletor just tells him to piss off and don't come back, which leads to the best line ever spoken in any any related He-Man show. Listen, I am not nice, I am not kind, and I am not wonderful. And I'm still delivering you to Horde Prime. Once again, I just love this man. I truly do. About to hand over the children to Horde Prime, he-Man and she return up. Oh yeah, I forgot what they were in this movie. But oh wait, so does Hordak and his men as they attack she and He-Man. Yep, the strongest people in the universe are jumped by a single robot man. Yep, okay, sure thing. Fending off one after the other, Horde Prime attempts to take the children when Skeletor feels the spirit of Christmas. He blasts away the claw trying to take the kids, blowing it into pieces and setting Horde Prime's ship crashing to the ground. But hey, why leave things the way they are? Let's toss that piece of shit into the space! Bammo! The kids running to hug their heroes! Uh, Skeletor, wait, what? Yes, Skeletor is the hero of this piece. I shit you not, people. I think you are feeling the Christmas spirit, Skeletor. Cutting to the royal palace with all the Christmas decorations surrounding by friends and family and Santa Claus. Wait, what? Duncan opens the gateway back to Earth for the kids to return home. Gee, this plotline sounds awfully familiar, doesn't it? Returning home to their parents, and oh, I love this. Missing their kids, what is the first thing the parents say? Oh, it's time for bed, time to go to sleep. Yep. You clearly missed your children lots and lots. And with one last shocking plotline, Prince Adam was Santa Claus? Wow, what a plot twist. Who saw that one coming? Darth Vader being Luke's father? Eat your heart out. And that is the end. And that was the He-Man and She-Ra Christmas special. Yep, it's corny, lame, silly, and, well, it's pointless. But aren't they all? I mean, all Christmas specials are. Look, it does have its charm, but focusing on an event from Earth kind of feels out of place in the Masters of the Universe. And if you think Santa Claus is out of place at He-Man, let's just look at this. Just keep in mind, that is meant to be connected to this. Yep, I didn't notice the difference at all. Well, thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe for future He-Man and the Masters of the Universe content. This has been Wayne for Beyond Grayskull, wishing you all a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and Good Journey. And as always, until next time.